Hey guys, welcome back to the Six Gear channel. And in today's review, I'm going to be reviewing a 2021 Explorer ST in Iconic Silver. Uh, it's pretty much fully loaded. And without any further ado, let's hop in. All right guys, so here's the 2021 Explorer ST. Color is in Iconic Silver and it does have the street pack. So with the street pack, you actually get the blacked out rims, performance brakes, and the red brake calipers. I truly love this option a lot better. I think the car stands out with the black rims and the red brake calipers. And I guess if you consider, if you consider performance brakes something you would like, then I guess go with the street pack. But nonetheless, I think it looks good, especially in the iconic silver color. I think it actually makes the car stand out a little bit more and it kind of hides the dirtiness of the car if it were to get dirty but without any further ado let's just hop in right here we have that honeycomb front grille with this explore st you do get a 360 camera standard st badging explore right on the front hood and as well as you have the led fog lamps down below beautiful led daytime running lamp with all explorers here which is pretty cool there is active grill shutters right at the back here to help direct air underneath the vehicle for better fuel efficiency but the nice thing is too with the Explorer I find that when you're sitting in the driver's seat the hood isn't too big so it's not like it's protruding so far out that you might not be able to see maybe kind of what's in front of you but nonetheless if you can't you do have six parking sensors at the front so one here one there one there and then also carries on to the driver's side as well it's pretty much it for the front end of the Explorer let's take a look at the power plant so underneath the hood of this Explorer ST, we have the three liter V6 uh, twin turbocharged motor producing 4 horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission. Uh, pretty cool, pretty fast. Um, I truly like this three liter V6. It pulls really well. Um, I just, my only complaint would be I wish it sounded a little bit better coming from the exhaust, but nonetheless, really good motor. This is what the Explorer ST is equipped with. So let's take a gander around the Explorer ST. Like I mentioned, it does have the street pack, which gives you the 21 inch rims, black rims, of course, the red brake calipers and the performance brakes. Standard on the ST is black mirror caps, which look pretty good. We do have keyless entry. So right here, you just lock it, holding the lock button here with the key fob in your hand. And there's, there's a touch sensor right behind to grab and opens the door. Pretty simple, which is pretty cool. We have black trim right along the side there as well. It is plastic down here, and I believe really the main reason of that is so it doesn't really rust. So we do have plastic wheel well liners here too, and it carries throughout the whole side of the car. There is carpeted material inside the fender as well, just to give it that sound deadening so you don't hear as much noise. Ford has also included a key, uh, key coat here, which they always do. It's typically a Ford thing. Um, the nice thing too is with the rear door handle, you actually get that same uh, touch sensor here. So you can, with the key fob in your pocket, you can lock and unlock it without even having to go through the front door handle. I'm surprised they actually don't have that on the F-150s or well, a lot of their trucks specific, uh, specifically because it's, a, such a, it's such a nice feature and I don't know how much it would cost to just put it back there. But again, I like the fact that they do that in the Explorer. You do have rear tinted windows. So tinted there and there from factory. If we take a side profile view, usually with our customers, they like tinting the front windows because it kind of makes the whole car come together for the window purpose. We do have your rear uh, fuel cap at the back here. Take a light, nice little look at the rim at the back. Again, they're not you know, carbon ceramic brakes by any means. They're just a Ford Performance brake. I like that 21 inch rim and especially the red brake calipers. The if you don't get the street pack, I can't say I'm a fan of those rims and the whole look of the ST itself. You gotta get the street pack because it just makes it look so badass, I have to say. This does have also the optional uh, rail racks too. So if you ever want to put anything on top of the ST, you can do so. But nonetheless, let's take a look at the rear. All right, so coming along the rear of the ST, beautiful thing is there's pros and cons to this exhaust. I'll just mention down here it's quad which looks so good but it's a fake quad and I don't, I'm not sure why manufacturers are doing this but if we take a look actually at the exhaust themselves the holes 
actually, well, the exhaust itself leaks underneath, comes underneath instead of here, because you can see the pipes, they're angled down below. Something I wish manufacturers didn't do, didn't do, but I'm assuming it's for keeping your muff, your your t uh, tailpipes clean. But not really sure why they're doing that. Please, any manufacturer that's doing that, stop. I know Mercedes is doing that, Audi's a little bit too, and BMW. I'm not really sure, but please just make it a true exhaust. Even if it's got black stuff on the exhaust tips, who cares? Just clean them out. But one complaint for the back: we do have a trailer tow package on this too which is pretty cool max tow on this is 5600 pounds so if you got a boat or anything like that maybe around that realm of weight you should be good to tow on this here coming along the back again we have led tail lights for the back and they look pretty good especially when they're on but right now we're in the sunlight so we can't really tell we have explorer here in the back in black of course when you get the st and then you have some black trim also too right above the mufflers when it comes to STs. Also, for it being an ST, let's take a look at that uh, exhaust we got here on it. Now, one thing that I do like, well, two things I do like about the rear, is that you do have a rear view camera but the nice thing is too when you put the rear wiper on and you put the rear nozzle spray on there's a little mechanism here that actually sprays the camera really good feature especially in canada or any other weather where you'd be getting your rear camera dirty another cool feature is while you do have two well three ways well four ways actually to open up the tailgate one with the key fob two you can use your foot um Three, you can actually just use the button over here, which I'll show you, or four, you can do it inside the interior. But a cool feature is instead of actually just trying to figure out where the heck the button is, there's a little arrow here that kind of outlines where the button would be. So if I push it, the back just opens right up, just like that. Now coming into the back of the ST, there's not truly a ton of room back here. Um, if you're buying this truly for a rear interior space, then it's not really the vehicle that you would want. I mean, if you're gonna put the two seats down or maybe one seat down, you'd have ample amount of room. But if you're gonna have the seats up, there is truly not a big amount of room back here. But I'll show you when we put the seats down, you can actually push this here, these buttons. If I'm gonna push the middle one, what it's gonna do is actually put both seats down automatically. And that will show me how much room I can have. So the nice thing is it creates a flat floor and you're able to put stuff in here a lot more than you would if you had the seats up. In the center too, you can see that there are two captain chairs instead of the bench, which I like a little bit better, just for more room to get in and out of the vehicle. There is some storage pockets in here. Now you do have platform or um, things to put here to kind of make it flat. You do have stuff here to put and that gives you more room to kind of give you a flat floor. We do have more storage in here. So there's that as well. But other than that, I think the back room is not too, too bad. The nice thing is too, you, it is automatic, especially when you're paying this kind of price. You can actually just kind of pick two which one you want up. So if I just push the one side, if, you know, it's a 50-50 split. There are only two seats back here, not three. So it gives you a 50-50 split. Maybe if you want to put maybe just one thing back here and slide it in and still have a passenger back here. But tons of options, which is pretty cool. We do have a 12 volt back here as well. And we do have some hooks here if you need to hook anything. Another one right over there. But coming to the back area, I'll just kind of move in here. We do have actually some cup holders and some slots there to maybe put your phone or anything like that. But I'm surprised there are no USBs or USB-Cs back here. I think that would be very beneficial if you do have people back here. So one little thing to, to note if you are purchasing this vehicle, but other than that, I think it's pretty cool. But that's pretty much it for the back and the back seat. Let's take a look in the middle. All right, so hopping into the Explorer ST middle seat, we're greeted with a black interior, which I truly like, white stitching, of course, and that's pretty much the only interior you can get for the Explorer ST. But let's start with the door panel. I find that the new generation of Explorer, the door panel in the rear is actually really, really big. So one thing I do know actually is when I sit in it, 
my arm actually reaches probably just about here and it fits really nice too i like the fact that it's really big and they add your sunshades too to block on all the people and the sunshades so pretty cool feature i like that option well, let's hop in right here into the center again we have that nice leather interior which is pretty cool white stitching of course and it comes up all the way through the top of the seat two ways to actually move the seat back which is pretty cool there's a button over here i can push that and the seat just kind of moves forward very easy the only thing that i i'm not a huge fan of is the entryway to get in the whole entryway actually for the door itself is huge but i find where the seat is and where it kind of stops there's not a ton of room to get in that's one thing i wish ford kind of made a little bit bigger but there again is what the back seats look like there now there is actually another way to actually move the seat with this lever here when i pull it well first i'm actually going to move the seat back there is a lever underneath here where i can move the seat back but now the seat i can actually have the backrest actually come down so for example if you needed more room to slide something in if no one was sitting here you do have more room for that and that's what this lever down here does all you got to do is just lift it by your hand to bring it back up there are some nice features back here too for the rear passengers you do have heated seats you have a usb and usb-c and a 110 volt 150 watt uh, household outlet back here with their own climate controls if needed to be the nice thing is too like i mentioned with the captain chairs is you actually get uh, cup holders and some storage down here below which i like a little bit better but again it's just going to come down to your personal preference one other thing i do want to mention is this does have the optional panoramic moonroof i am still surprised that it's optional when you pay about you know 60 plus canadian on stuff like this but again it is an option some people might not want it but there it is for you to see but it's pretty much it for the back let's take a look at the front all right, so hopping into the Explorer ST, again, we're greeted with that black interior, carries throughout the whole, pretty much interior. <laughs> uh, we do have that Bang & Olufsen system in here, which sounds really, really good. We have memory seating here, lock and unlock, window controls, mirror controls over here. But again, pretty standard door panel, nothing too crazy. Now with the ST, you actually get a Ford Performance door sill down here, which actually looks pretty cool. Doesn't light up or anything that I'm aware of, but it's just a kind of a chromish touch here which looks pretty good now to open the actual hood itself you can't open the hood when you're driving you have to actually have or with the door shut you actually have to have the door open because when you have to hit this twice then it unlocks it basically because if you hit it once it won't open down here we have your seat adjustments here so uh, lumbar and massaging seats in the ST and then controlling your whole seat itself is here over here we have your light controls which is pretty standard and your power lift gate control here but it's pretty much it before entering the ST. Let's take a look actually at the interior. All right, so hopping into the Explore ST, we're actually greeted with a 12 inch display here, which looks really, really good. I don't mind the color itself there, but I mean, it's a nice digital display. I really can't complain. Right now I have my RPMs and my kilometers per hour on the left and my fuel economy on the right. Now using these controls here, you can actually control what type of features or creature comforts you want on the left so if I hit back or sorry menu rather I can select screens and I can put a calm screen in there which is pretty cool just kind of gives you basically a calm screen like right now it just does this and it's a calm screen there's not much there I do have other settings on here so uh, that's my lane keeping assist right there so I just turn that off so again just makes it a really calm screen just nothing else there and that's that over here we have your phone pickup, your Bluetooth controls, voice commands there. Uh, this is your cruise control. This is your lane centering, which is a really, really cool function. And volume controls, mute, that kind of thing. Pretty standard stuff on the steering wheel. The steering wheel itself actually feels pretty good for being an ST. I do wish it was kind of a more flat bottom steering wheel, but I guess you can call it flat here with the ST logo down below. Lane centering controls are here as, as well as your turn signals and then you have your wipers on the other side. Overall steering wheel and the whole look of the center, I, again, pretty cool. I'm not really too picky about anything at the front. I think it looks pretty good. Um, nothing too crazy that would stand out to me when you hop in except the screen, which we will go over shortly. The dash itself is soft touch material. It's not 
I don't know if it's a leather, to be honest with you. It's just like, it looks like a soft touch material. I do wish that they actually had kind of like a stitching along the center or not along the center, along the dash, because I think it just looks a little bit cooler. Again, that's just my opinion, but dash looks pretty good. Nothing really too crazy about the dash itself. Over here on the driver's side, we have your glove box down below. Pretty standard stuff. And then we have this kind of plastic trim that carries kind of throughout the whole dash itself. It's not a carbon fiber. It's kind of a carbon fiber look-alike weave, but again, it's, it's not a carbon fiber, so... Then we have your center screen and let's go over that. So the center screen is actually a 10.1 inch touchscreen. Um, it's split up into two pieces basically. Um, right now I have the nav at the top and my audio at the bottom. You can configure it to the way you want, but honestly, I wish it actually just was a 10 inch screen horizontally. I don't know if I like the whole, you know, 10.1 inch vertical screen. I mean, it's a good idea. I think it looks pretty cool, but I just, I don't know, something horizontally just makes it look a little bit better. That's just my opinion. So this is actually Sync 3.4, not Sync 4. Uh, just the Sync 4 is pretty much only in the F-150s as of now. So don't uh, think you're getting into a 2020, 2021 Explorer and thinking it is Sync 4 because it's not. But again, it's pretty intuitive. I'm not going to lie. But we do have your hotkeys down below here. Home audio, phone, nav, apps, that kind of thing. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory it's not too crazy nothing too fancy but um, again if you like a vertical screen then this would be for you but nonetheless pretty cool pretty intuitive too I don't mind it so like I mentioned before we got in this does have massaging seats so by pushing that lumbar type of button on the side of the seats or in going into settings you can adjust the massaging seats via through the screen so this feature is awesome I truly love it especially in these cars um, and yeah, it's just an awesome feature. I wish more cars were continuing this in, uh, in their lineup. So that's what you get when you get the tech pack on this vehicle. We do have your volume controls down below here, which is, which is nice. And then tuning knob. This camera button actually is for to activate your front camera. So when I press it, I get three different views. So I can click this for a nice 180. I can get this for more of a pointy view at the front, but, um, yeah, that's basically what you have to do to activate the front camera. But I guess it's nice to have a front camera. This is your parking sensors here, your tuning knobs, or your tuning buttons down below here, and then your climate control. So we do have heated steering wheel, heated seats, and cooled in this, in this ST. It's standard on limited and higher. Your climate controls are here, and then here are also your different settings down below. We do have a pocket here down below as well. And this is just more for storage. Um, Apple CarPlay, you can plug it in here and that will activate. We do have a 12 volt down here too, right there. The wireless charging pad is actually not over here. It's down over right near the center console, which I'll show you. Fit the dial here. We have your parking sensor, your auto hold function here. So what this function does is if you are stopped and you are in drive, it will put the car in a hold function so you don't have to have your foot on the brake. Down below we have your trash control, your hill descent control. This The car will actually park itself, pretty cool feature. Uh, and then your auto stop start. So to turn it off, we just hit that. And when it illuminates off, that means it's off. The drive mode select actually controls your center screen. So I'll show you right now what it does. So I'm just gonna turn the knob and it's gonna go into different settings. So normal, eco, sport, there's tow haul mode. I'll actually let you see kind of what it does. So you can see the different animations. Again, it's a really cool thing to see. And when you actually do put in like, for example, sport mode, it actually lowers the RPMs and gives you better throttle response. So it's not just the mode that they just threw in there, but let's keep it in sport mode. We do have cup holders down below as well, as you saw storage here, which I usually say is for your phone, which is pretty cool. And let's get into the center console. So like I mentioned, the wireless charging pad is right below the center console. So you just put your phone here and it will automatically charge. Center console is stitched with that white stitching and as well as being leather itself, nice to, uh, nice to have. This here is your kind of, not a divider, it's just basically a storage option there. You can actually remove it and give you better access for the center console itself. It's pretty deep actually considering, um, but that's what you got there. You have, and also a, 12 volts and you also have a 12 volt charger as well 
So it's pretty much it for the interior. Let me give you my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on the interior, I think it looks really good. I think they do a really good job with the quality of the stuff in here. I think it looks pretty good. I actually don't mind the whole center interior, uh, whole center stack myself. But again, it's it's not like doesn't give me a wow factor, to be honest. Like it's not like holy crap, I'm in an ST. Um, but again, I think that's what Ford's trying to do. They're trying to make the ST brand maybe a little bit better. So when you maybe hop in one, you're like holy crap, this, this thing really is cool. But uh, overall, I think there's great space in the trunk um, when you have the seats down. There's tons of room actually when you sit in the middle seat itself. I think the middle seats are great. They're they're very comfortable, very plush. They look really good. And uh, being in the center um, center drive or the driver's seat itself, I think it's pretty cool. But all right, guys. So let's talk price of this bad boy. I actually had to take the window sticker off because the tint in the back is too too much. So let's take a look. The price here is sixty six thousand six hundred forty nine dollars Canadian. It is fully loaded. Again, there's pretty much no other option you can get. It's a 401A. You have your twin panel moonroof the tech package, which gives you actually the upgraded Bang & Olufsen speakers, the 10.1 inch screen, and the multi-contour seats, which they are massaging too. So they are awesome in that sense. Uh, it's got the street pack, like I mentioned too, and the roof rack side rails. So pretty loaded for uh, an Explorer ST. There's really not many more options you can get. So that is the price. All right, guys, so here are my final thoughts on it. Um, really, really nice SUV, really. And like I mentioned in the video, it's pretty much the only one out there, a sports SUV three row for about 66 grand Canadian. And it really does the job well. Um, I love the motor, it's very quick. The shifts are actually okay, they're not too bad. I mean, it's not a dual clutch transmission, but it shifts pretty smooth, which I like. And it's peppy. My only thing is, is that and it's not very, you know, maybe luxurious inside. I love the leather appointed, appointed seats and, you know, the ST badging on the seats as well. But um, the whole interior is not like, holy crap, it's, you know, I'm hopping into an ST type thing. But other than that, I think it's a really nice SUV. If you guys have any questions or anything you want to ask, let me know in the comments and we'll see you in my next video.